I'm Tim Fisher. Welcome to my uh, garden. I'm sorry I can't be with you this year, but hopefully this will be the next best, best thing. Today I'm going to show you how to create a, a pastel painting on Fisher 400 art paper. So follow me into my studio. Don't trip up on the beer. Okay, so um, I've got a, a sheet of Fisher 400 art paper here. Uh, which is approximately 11 by 14 inches and I'm going to paint this little scene of Kalem onto it but I'm going to just interpret it slightly so I've got all my gear laid out here on my turntable so I've got access to all the different things so the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to start with a, a bottle of black ink and an old matchstick and I'm going to start by doing the drawing So the, the cottage is facing us, um, but it is turned at a slight angle because I can see the gable end, the end of the building there. So I'm going to exaggerate that slightly and just make it look as if the, the gutter line's going downhill just a little. A matchstick is a really nice um, device to use for your drawing. You can get this lovely expressive line. And you don't have to worry if you go wrong because uh, soft pasta is a very opaque medium so any mistakes you can cover up with uh, the pastel itself. I've got a little bit of paper on here which I can scribble on and take off the excess ink uh, in case I put too much on the surface. So we'll just start to sketch in the, 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 uh, the building. I don't usually put a, a base on my buildings. This is to allow them to settle more into the landscape. They, they look more natural uh, when you leave a few spaces. So when I, um, when I took this photograph, it, the, um, the area looked a little bit of a building site. So I'm going to um, take a little bit of artistic license and um, take out a lot of the stuff that was in the foreground and um, make up uh, some other bits for that. I'll have a nice big tree coming out the back there and let's surround the, um, the farmhouse with another bit of foliage. I'd like to just have a, a little wall going down here. You always have to be careful when you put walls across a painting that you don't have one continuous block. So um, I'm going to have a, a little gate here that's open and um, maybe just a few sheep in the foreground just to, to break the shape up a little. So there we have the, the drawing. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to cover the whole thing uh, with ink. So I need to just let it dry for a few moments. And while that's happening, I'm going to squeeze out some colour. So I've got three colours. I've got a, a red, a, a blue and a yellow. These are FW acrylic inks and I find they're extremely good for creating an underpainting uh, before we start creating the artwork. So I'm going to start with, um, this is, I used to think it was French ultramarine blue and it's not, it's, um, it's roundy blue. So that's quite a strong blue. And this one is crimson. A couple of squirts of that. And then finally, yellow ochre. You do find that when you're working with inks, the colors are quite, quite bright. So um, yellow ochre is normally quite a, a dull color when you're working with watercolours or uh, acrylics or things like that but when you find when you use it in an ink it's quite a, a strong colour. I haven't got a brush. I need to go and get a brush. Right that was
was Freya getting the brush for me. Okay, so I'm going to now apply um, inks to the surface. But before I do that, I'm just going to dab the surface with a tissue lock and just take out any ink that's not quite dried. As you can see, there's, there's still wet in areas, and if I start putting the ink on now, it's going to bleed quite badly. So I'm going to um, just sort of my hair dryer. Yes, there it is. Just going to um, tickle that with the hair dryer. There, that should be dry enough to apply the ink now. I've got a big pot of water. So I don't normally put the ink on neat. Um, just dilute it down a little bit with, with water. And I'm going to just apply a little bit of red. So we've got a slightly pinky area to the sky there. And then we can um, just go a little bit mad and just splash lots of colour onto the surface. I'm trying to think about the order I apply the colours because we don't want to end up with a green sky but it would be nice if we had a little bit of green in the foreground. This yellow works quite well with the red. We get quite a nice orangey colour there and as I progress down I'm just going to introduce some little hints of the blue and that should go a, a nice greeny colour for the foreground area. It uh, can be a little bit intimidating doing this, but don't forget we're going to cover it all with, um, with pastel. Well, nearly all of it. Some of the colours will actually shine through and it does help to unite the painting um, when we do that. I'll just put a little bit of red in there. So that's the colour applied. We're going to stop filming for a few moments now while the surface dries and then I'll come back and start applying the pastel. <laughs> 